We are following major breaking news tonight. Disgraced FTX CEO Sam Bankman Fried has been found guilty on all counts in his criminal trial. That verdict could send him to jail for the rest of his life. I'm talking 100 years. For more, I want to bring in two absolute experts, NPR correspondent David Gura and Bloomberg reporter Zeke Fox. He just wrote the book that was talked about throughout this trial, like 15 different times they were bringing it up. It is called Number Go Up, Inside Crypto's Wild Rise and Staggering Fall. Zeke, I turn to you first. You have lived this trial, okay? This trial was not about cryptocurrency, right? People think like, oh my gosh, crypto is confusing, it's complicated. This is an old school case of fraud. Yeah, and that's how the prosecutors presented it. They were like bringing in his best friends, his lieutenants, one after another. Each of these people came up there and said, yeah, I committed fraud, I did bad things, I'm really sorry, and I did it with that curly haired guy over there. And when they got into the complicated stuff, the jury was literally nodding off. So I think that uh, the impression they're left with is like a guy that couldn't be trusted, who betrayed his friends, who betrayed his customers, his investors. And the jury only took four hours to reach a decision. Did that surprise you? I mean, you watched every day, every minute of this. You would show up at midnight so you could get a seat in the courtroom. Were you surprised that it only took four hours? You watched every ounce of this thing. I mean, I would have thought they would take a couple days to go through all the evidence, but I'm told that when a jury, I mean, they were a lot more dedicated than me. They <laughs> took time off from their regular jobs to go do this for more than a month. So I think they were ready to get home and the evidence was overwhelming. And that's what I wanna to get to, the overwhelming evidence. David, what were your big takeaways here? You know, the, the first part of this trial centered on that compelling testimony that Zeke is talking about. It was wild to see this close group of friends turn on the guy who brought them all together. That was very dramatic, very compelling. And then there was this moment where Sam bankman fried decides to throw the Hail Mary. He sees how bad that's gone for him. He's going to go testify in his own defense, which nobody does. Every lawyer I talked to said this is like the craziest thing I mean, he, thing he walked the plank. Yes. And it was clear from like, I think you might agree, like a minute into his testimony when he was being cross-examined by the prosecution that this was a bad idea. And, you know, the prosecutor had all these receipts about what he had said in the past and what he had done, metadata that showed that he'd look at certain spreadsheets or documents. So all of the arguments that he made in his own defense just vanished immediately. And so I was struck in that part of the trial, like, yes, it was his own words coming back to bite him, but also it was just the mountain of evidence that they had at their disposal to show that you know this was something he knew about from the get-go. Okay, so this is what I want to talk about. Because when you think about Bernie Madoff, right, he scammed all sorts of unknowing individuals, right? Mom and pops, people, you know, just giving him, handing over their retirement income saying, I don't know how you're a finance genius, but make it happen. That's not the case with Sam Bankman Freed, okay? He had some of the biggest, most sophisticated investors in the world, right? Not just people would say like, oh, he had um, Tom Brady and Giselle, not just famous people. He had some of the biggest money managers or investors who get huge fees to manage money, right? throwing money at this guy and a jury figures out in four hours he's guilty as sin none of these big investors knew yeah i mean i think it shows something about their investment evaluation process i mean sequoia capital they've uh, described this on themselves he was pitching them and he was playing a video game while he did it and instead of being like hmm, i don't know about this guy like he's disrespecting us they're like wow we love it what kind of founder can play a video game while pitching us. Like, let's raise the valuation another 10 billion. Isn't that bananas? I mean, it was exactly this time last year. I watched Larry Fink, right, the CEO of BlackRock, interview Sam Bankman Freed on stage and off stage. All of these monster money managers wearing $10,000 suits with $400 haircuts hanging on his every word as he rolls up completely unkempt, practically in his pajamas. Should they not be humiliated? Are any of their investors saying we need to check your process? I think that they are. Some evidence that came out were these emails about dinners that they had for Sam Bankman Freed in the city, and you saw these investment firms kind of falling all over themselves. What's Sam's favorite vegan restaurant in the city so that we can all go there and hear what he has to say? And going back to what you just said a moment ago, Stephanie, I mean, last year about this time, there was this 
big business conference in Saudi Arabia, Dav Davos in the desert. Mm -hmm. Sam Bankman Fried was there. Larry Fink was there. All these guys were there mm -hmm. meeting with him. And it's funny to look at that now in hindsight. I think that we saw it at the time before we learned what was happening. I mean, you had an inkling of what was happening before all of this took place. But, you know, everyone thought that FTX was this big company. Sam Bankman Fried had all this power. And people were just fawning over him, trying to give him money. And it's, it's astonishing to look back on the size of these fundraising rounds that they had. The company was valued at $32 billion dollars. What as recently as what a year and a half ago? I Where think. are his parents in all of this? Many have said they were his enablers. Certainly, his father, who was part of the company. I interviewed Sheila Kohatkar, and she, his mother, had not yet said to him, "Sam, did you do it?" Which is stunning to right. I have very badly behaved children, and when school calls, the first thing I say to them is, "Did you do it?" The parents never asked him. Should we infer from that that they are deeply entangled? They knew the answer. It did come out in the trial that the father, Joe Bankman, was on a lot of the Signal group chats, mm -hmm. the ones that were auto-deleted. So we don't know exactly what was going on in there, but it seems like he was pretty connected to what was going on at, at FTX. Sure was. And like an astonishing moment, too, is his parents were there for every day of this trial, except for when the prosecution gave its closing arguments. Um, his parents came in greeted Sam from across the bar, nodded at him as they did every day, and then they left. They couldn't sit through that. So I was taken by what Sheila said as well, that they hadn't entertained this. But I think that that was a moment asking. at which they had to reckon with the fact that, you know, over three and a half weeks, again, the evidence built and built and built. They heard from Nishad Singh, a family friend, that Sam had done all of this. And I think it, it finally became so crushing that they couldn't take it for that final argument. All right, last question, a philosophical one. The man's guilty, took four hours. He could face 100 years in prison. That is a long time. That is longer than some murderers face. Think about the financial crisis. People went to jail for zero dollars. And in the financial crisis, there was a massive amount of wrongdoing that impacted huge amount. I mean, some people are still impacted by it. What do you think about that? I do think that you have to have jail time for white collar criminals. If the punishment is just give the money back, a lot of these guys would be like, let's give it a try, whatever. Yeah. Your thought? I think that that's true. I think that there is something about this industry that folks in traditional finance can still step back from and say, like, that's not us. That's something different. It's in its infancy. Regulations aren't in effect yet. And I think they can kind of have that level of remove. Um, and I think there's an element here where you have the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York saying, I want this to be something that other fraudsters, other people in this industry look to and say, look, <laughs> law enforcement is taking this seriously. This can't be the Wild West. We have to rein it in. And I think it gets back to this whole movement of, this has to be regulated. There have to be rules in place that we don't have yet. And let's be clear. Wild West, new products, big risk taking. You could put that over here and you could lose a whole lot of money gambling like that. Old school fraud and taking money from X and funneling it into Y. That's illegal.